All right, welcome back to another episode of Programming with Slick2D. Learning how to write a game here. Um, I know I've been away for a long time. I've been very busy, and then I checked YouTube the other day to see, um, you know, just to check some things out, and I looked at my videos, and I realized that uh, quite a few people watched them and left comments, and uh, so I thank you for that. Um, I wasn't anticipating these being so popular, so... Um, Thank you, and thanks for all the good comments, and that's basically why I'm continuing, because people are appreciative of what I'm trying to do here. So um, keep leaving those comments, keep giving me a thumbs up, and I'll continue this series as best I can. Okay, I'm going to try and keep a little bit more active. It's been a couple months, but the good news is today we'll finally do something somewhat cool. Okay, So we're going to work with images. Okay, So here's what I'm going to tell you. You need a couple things open. First, open up your Eclipse with your a code from uh, last time. So here's our code from last time. If I hit the run button, you should get, you know, that blue box that we drew and that yellow hello on the top left. All right, we're going to leave off with this code base. Um, and then I also have open um, my folder where I started all this at. So I got my slick, my LWJGL, and I got my game projects. Okay, so you're going to have to have this open as well. Okay? So have those two things open. You got Eclipse open, and you got the folder where you have everything stored open. Okay? With your Eclipse, game projects, okay, all that stuff. All right? So when it comes to Slick, um, we have a couple options for images. Okay? Um, Slick 2D supports three main types of images, all right? The most popular ones JPEG, all right? PNG, and GIF, all right? JPEGs, they're good. That's what all your cameras take pictures with, your phones, all that stuff. They're all JPEGs. Um, good quality pictures. The problem with it for games is there's no transparency, all right? Um, PNGs, another really high quality format, except this allows transparencies, all right? And then GIF is kind of like a low quality format. You're not going to get the best quality images that are stored in GIF format. Um, and that also allows transparency. Okay, so let's talk about what we mean by transparency. Here you have two images on the screen. One has transparency, one does not. Now you should know all images are, you know, boxes. This image here of this plane is a box. And there's, if you put this on the screen, this is a JPEG. If you put this JPEG on the screen in a game, you're going to see this plane like this with the white box flying around, all right? as opposed to this sword. Now, if I click on the sword, you can see the box around the sword. The sword is a square image. All right? The difference is that this sword is a PNG, and that means that I'm, I can knock out pieces of the image to make them transparent. So if I put it on the green background, it's green. If I put it in the middle, it has that gradient from black to green behind it. Here it's all black. If I put it on top of, well, I can't because it's not in front. Let me bring to front. If I put it on top of this plane, the plane shows through. All right, even though it is a square image, we can see through it. Okay, so those are two types of images you're going to want to know about. All right, so JPEGs, no transparency, like this plane here. If you download a JPEG and put it in your game, it's not going to be transparent. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad, and we'll talk about when that's good and bad. PNGs allow transparency, so I can put a sword on the screen and not worry about it looking like a boxed image. All right, so those are your two main options. I'm going to use JPEGs and PNGs for today's tutorial. Okay, what JPEGs and PNGs? Well, I'm going to use the JPEGs and PNGs. Um, I'm going to show you what they look like. I'm going to use this space background right here. All right, if I double click it, so I'm going to use this space background. It's a JPEG. That means there's no transparency, but that's fine because it's going to be my background. I don't need to have like holes punched in it. All right, and then I'm going to use this UFO, which is a JPEG and does have, um, you know, holes knocked out so that when I put it on top of this background, it doesn't look like a square image. All right, now these two images. In the description to this video, you can click on links to download these exact images. All right, that's what I highly suggest you do, just so you're with me on on the exact images. Okay, so go ahead and pause right now. Pause the video. Um, 
download, click on the links to download these two images. Okay, save them wherever you save them. But un, you have to know where you save them. If it's in your downloads or your my documents or my pictures, just make a note of where you're saving these two images. Okay, do that now. Hit the pause button now. Okay, you're back. Or you didn't hit pause, did you? Okay, go ahead, hit pause. Okay, now you're back. All right. So you got these two images wherever they're at. All right, whether in your downloads or my documents, whatever, you got to find them. Okay, highlight both of them, and then I'm going to choose to copy them. So I'm going to highlight both of them and hit copy, or you can highlight both of them and hit Control C, which is the shortcut to copy. Okay, either way, you want to copy these two images. Okay, so copy them. Then go to your folder where you have all your your Eclipse, your LWJ, your Slick, and then we you have a folder called Game Projects that we created together. So you click in Game Projects and inside Game Projects you should have a folder called First Slick 2D Project. Okay, so you click on the First Slick 2D Project. This is all the code that Eclipse made for you. Okay, um, it gives you a settings, a bin, a source folder, a class path and project file. All right, there's two really important folders in here. The first really important folder is the source folder. The source folder hold, holds the code Okay. If I were to open this right now, it would just open in, you know, Notepad, and you can see that's my code. Okay. So it opens my code in Notepad. Um, that's your source folder. It holds like the actual code that you're writing. And then the bin folder. Bin stands for binary. This is the folder where it has the end product of your code. Okay. Your code needs to be translated from Java to some binary, okay, bytecode in this case, and this is the p this is the file that actually runs when your game executes, when you hit the run command. Okay, so you should see main.class. All right. Now, in order to pull pictures into the game, you need to go to your bin folder. Okay, so look up top, I'm in my game program with slick2d, game projects, first slick 2D, sorry, first slick 2D project bin folder. And I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to paste my two images. So now in my bin folder for my first Slick 2D project, I have three files. I have my main.class, I have my space background.jpg, and I have my ufo.png. It's very important that those sit together because this main class is the file that runs and it needs to have these images next to it so it can bring it in. Okay, it's just the easiest way to do it right now. Obviously there's other ways and other things we can do and we can put them in different places but easiest thing right now is to put these two files in your bin folder so that we can bring them into the code. Okay, so you've done that. Let's go to our code now. And I'm going to run my code one more time and show you what we got. So I got a uh, yellow hello in this blue box right here. I have that because I drew it in render right here. So go to your render method right here and go ahead and erase those two things. Okay, the two, those four lines where we changed the color and drew. If I run again now, nothing, because I'm not, not drawing anything right now. I'm about to change that. So first thing, and let's, let, let's get our background in, okay? So I'm going to go up top, right below the line public class main extends basic game. I'm going to go right here, and this is the place where you're going to want to create all your variables. So I'm going to put a little comment here. Um, I'm going to say um, my game images. All right. Comments are always good, so it explains to you, you know, if you look at this code three days from now, you understand what, what goes below. Um, so my game images. So I'm going to declare an image right here. Image, and I can name it anything I want. I'm going to call it just back for background. Okay. And you notice that I'm going to get an error on the word image. If you just hover over image, you have the ability to import from two different locations, just like we did last time. You want to import image from org.newdon.slick. Okay? You do not want to import from java.awt. That's the wrong image. Okay? Um, we want to import, so choose the option that says import image from org.newdon.slick. And that error goes away. All right. This is how we declare all images in Slick. If you want to put an image in your game, you start with image and then the name of that image. This name can be anything, but it's got to be one word. Okay. You can't do like two word images like um, my back. Can't do that. That's going to be an error. Okay. One word, you name that image. 
okay whatever it is you want to call that image for the rest of the time now I have an image but it's blank you know I can't do anything with it yet because I haven't loaded the actual image all right I've just told Java kind of like hey I have an image I'm gonna call it back but I haven't told Java like all right this is the image I want all right and where I do that is in a niche remember that there we have three main methods okay we have render which draws all our graphics we have a niche which loads all fonts graphics sounds and we have update well, that's where we put our AI and user input so obviously I'm gonna go to a niche right here it loads all fonts graphics and sounds and that's exactly what I want to do right now I want to load a graphic so to load the graphic it's gonna be back equals new image and then the file name the exact file name of the image in your folder so it might be helpful to go back to your folder and look right here and look at this exact file name spaceback.jpg okay some of you might not even have the .jpg sometimes windows hides we call those file extensions the .jpg windows will hide those from you all right if you're not sure um, if yours is not showing the .jpg you can right click and go to properties on any image and it should give you you know the name and the type of file right here all right to prove to you that it's spaceback.jpg windows just hides that from you sometimes so i know it's spaceback.jpg so i'm going to go back to my code and i want to load the image spaceback.jpg i'm going to put a semicolon at the end of this line this is going to go to that folder, pull that image in. Okay, now's a good time to test. I'm going to run this. Now, I get no change. I get a black window, nothing drawn, you know, no change at all. It looks like I've done nothing. Okay, but I have done something very important. I've loaded that image. All right, and if you can run right now and you get this black screen, you're good. All right, what's bad is if you misspell this or something. So if I just call this, let's call it space. All right. What Java is going to notice is not an error. Okay. And what Java is going to, going to attempt to do is when I hit the run button, it's going to go to this folder, and it's going to it's going to go to this folder right here. Sorry, it's going to go to this folder right here, and it's going to attempt to load space.jpg. Well, it's going to go to this folder and attempt to load space.jpg, and it's going to what? It's it's not going to find it. There's no file. There's no picture here called space.jpg. All right. So you'll see what's going to happen. I'm going to hit run, hit OK, and boom, it opens and immediately closes. And at the bottom part of right here, you can see that I have a bunch of, you know, a lot of red text, which is obviously bad. Okay? And that's a result of me not loading the correct picture. I misspelled it. So if you spell it correctly and you can run it and you get no change, that's good. That means that Java loaded your picture correctly. Okay, so now I've loaded it. I'm going to draw it. You draw stuff in render. Here's how you draw an image. G dot draw image. Okay. Um, first, it's the name of the image. Okay, the name of the image is not. A lot of people get confused. This it's not the file name. The only time you'll ever see the file name for the image is when you load it. The name of the image in code is this image right is this name right here back it's the name I gave it up here so I want to draw the back that's what I called it alright and all this extra stuff can go that's that's a little bit more advanced we don't we're not gonna worry about that stuff so to draw the image I say g dot draw image the name of the image which is what I name it up here and then where I want to put it well this background happens to be exactly 800 by 600 pixels which happens to be the exact size of my game window all right so where do I want to put it if I want it to fill the whole screen I'm gonna put it at zero zero keep in mind that when I place an image when I place anything on the screen I tell XY this is the top left corner this will place my backgrounds top left corner at the top left corner of my screen which is zero zero so if I hit run now you should get a nice background on the screen okay and I drew it at zero zero. You're gonna to want to draw all your backgrounds at zero zero. That way they start up at this top left and they fill the whole screen. Okay, so zero zero. All right. And we're just gonna do exactly the same thing to get this UFO on the screen. So I'm gonna come back up top. There's three steps to getting an image on the screen. All right. So step one, up top, I create a new image. I'm gonna call this one UFO. 
I can call this anything I want, any single word. Okay. So first, step one, declare it. Step two, go to your init down here and load it. So UFO equals new image. And in the quotation marks right here, I got to make sure that I spell it exactly right. It's UFO.png. So UFO.png. And now it's always a good opportunity to run right now and make sure that it runs. If it does, it means this loaded correctly. Okay, so step one, declare it up top. Step two, load the actual image. Step three, draw the image. Okay, so I'm going to draw UFO. And here I'm going to choose, I'll just put it at 200, 200. Doesn't really matter where I put it. All right, if I hit run now, you can see that I have an image. And at 200, 200, there's my UFO. It's a PNG. It's got transparency, so it looks, it fits perfectly on top of the thing. It doesn't look like a square image. It looks like that UFO is going to fly around and stuff. Okay. All right. So that's it for this one. Um, next one, I'm going to show you how to move the UFO with key presses and stuff and do a little bit of input. All right. We're getting pretty close to doing a game. I'm going to walk you through an actual game and we'll program a game together and I'll show you what goes into it. Um, but that's basically it. Okay, so you declare images by saying image background. Remember that you have to import from org.newdon.slick image. You load it in a niche, and then you go to render and you draw it. Drawing the order of drawing is very important. Okay, if I somehow reverse this, I, I have a problem. So if I play it now, I get my background but not my UFO. The reason being is I draw my UFO first. Then second, I draw my background, which of course is going to go on top of my UFO. And it, my UFO is there. It's just hidden. So make sure that you draw your background first and your UFO second. Okay, So order matters. And finally, be very careful that you uh, have these two images in your bin folder for your project and that you load this, the name perfectly. Okay, Those are the main problems I always see with new programmers is they forget to put the images in the bin folder and then they they don't pay attention to the names here the file names and they incorrectly spell them when they try and load that image in okay so hope you're enjoying it give me a thumbs up uh, leave me a comment ask me any questions you want um, I appreciate um, everyone watching I appreciate all the uh, feedback and uh, thanks for watching once again have a good day week month year hour whatever the heck you're doing alright peace out my name is Mickey Elray and I'll see you next time